Hey y'all, so today I wanna to talk about survival mode. I have had several seasons which I have had to just kind of push through and just default into survival mode. And I've learned a couple of things along the way and I wanna share those tips with you today. Okay, so truth be told, we are actually in survival mode kind of right now. If you are new here, I am currently uh, 28 weeks pregnant. I just hit the third trimester. I'm so excited. Um, but I've had uh, some back problems and pain uh, that's put me kind of not in my best mode for cleaning and doing all of the mom things. So I have had to resort back to my just very basics in order to just get things done. Hence, you know, mom bun and all of the things. You know, we have those seasons though, right? You know, it just happens. You have either you're pregnant, you're going through morning sickness, or you have a new baby, or maybe you move and you have just these big life changes that go on and it just pushes us into survival mode. It's not really our most glamorous uh, stage of motherhood. And to be honest, I wanted to title this video, um, how to rock survival mode. But I'm like, you know what? Nobody rocks survival mode. It's survival mode. <laughs> it's just getting by. So I just want to be um, really open about what has helped me. And I hope that some of these tips might help you if you are in that stage. So my first tip is to make a cleaning short list. So this is going to be a list of basically your bare minimum on what you need to get done in order for you to live in your house. For me, that is, I have to do one load of laundry every day because if I don't do one load of laundry, it all piles up and then I feel like I'm just swimming in laundry and I can't ever get it done. So one load of laundry has to get done. Um, the dishes have to get washed. I do my, my bathroom necessities. And so what that is for me is I just kind of put some toilet bowl cleaner in there, swish it around real quick, take a baby wipe and wipe down the counter. And then a little tip that I have found for keeping your shower to where you don't have to deep clean it is you put, get one of those little scrub brushes that has the um, sponge on the end and you put the Dawn or the dish soap in it. If you put half dish soap, half vinegar, and you mix it and you leave it, make sure to hang it up, otherwise all of it spills out. But you hang it up and you leave it in your shower and then whenever you're taking your shower, you go and clean like a wall or two. It takes you an extra minute and you don't actually have to clean your shower, which when you're in survival mode, <laughs> It doesn't happen. You won't clean your shower. At least I won't. It's my least favorite chore in general. And so it generally gets pushed to the very last anyway. And so making sure that I am keeping up on daily shower cleaning really helps me when I'm kind of just trying to get things to stay livable. I got a baby trying to push out her way out, the, out my belly button. <laughs> and then also on my my cleaning shortlist is I do include at least one pickup per day. So I get all the kids together and we do one general pickup of the main areas. Um, I try to get the big, well, my oldest to get his siblings in there and they try to clean up their room. Then I'll also make sure to just kind of glance at the floors. If, if in one particular room it seems really dirty and it needs to be vacuumed, I'll vacuum that room. So that's, but that's it on my list. So short little recap is one load of laundry, dishes, bathroom necessities, um, one pickup per day, and maybe vacuuming one room. And that's it. That's, that's all the cleaning that I will do on those days. And if it's a particularly good day, I may look around and see if I have something that really needs to be done. Like the bathroom floors are disgusting and I need to get that done. And it's, everything's lined up perfectly and I can, you know, clean the bathroom floors. So I'll add that onto my list. So I'll just add on the deep cleans as I have time instead of trying to schedule them out. And my last little cleaning tip that I got from somebody, and it was actually, I got it whenever I had really bad morning sickness and it was just a lifesaver. So I have three children. We actually have six people living in this house, this my 1200 square foot house, and we have a dog and a cat that both go outside. And so the floors get really nasty. 
but when I had really bad morning sickness, I could not mop. I just, I didn't have the energy. And so I had heard this really great tip that you would just, uh, to just whenever you're doing, for me, it was whenever I was doing the dishes because I use a dish rag to wipe off the counters. I would take that dish rag and throw it on the floor and just wipe the spots. <laughs> Any dirty spots that I would see, I would go wipe those up instead of trying to do a big mop. Now, eventually I did have to mop, but I didn't have to mop for a really long time because I was going around spot cleaning, just pushing a rag around with my foot. It was amazing. Okay, so my second tip is to lower your meal plan expectations. So I always have these big dreams for my meal plan. And even whenever we're having a good, you know, when we're in a good state, it never actually comes to fruition. I try so hard and it just doesn't happen. But especially in these harder times, just throw it out the window. Put your expectations on a shelf for a season whenever things are just flowing a little bit better. So with breakfast, easy. I mean, <laughs> stick to easy. Whenever I am in this stage of life or whatever season that is, um, we'll do cereal and I'll buy, you know, waffles and maybe toast. You know, it's not, we're not, I'm not making breakfast. It's just not, it's not happening. And so it's something that I can put into a toaster or something that I can put into a bowl and put milk in. And that's fine. That's breakfast. Give them a banana with it and they're good. Lunches, put your lunches on a rotation. So you would have like five lunches that are really easy for you to make and then put them on a rotation. Um, if you want to just not even have to think about it at all, you could do seven lunches and that way Monday, you know, say you have sandwiches every single Monday. So every Monday is sandwich day. Every Tuesday is, you know, hot dogs and mac and cheese. So you have specific meals on each day. My go-to easy meals for lunches whenever I'm having a really hard time is sandwiches, the hot dogs and the mac and cheese. Sometimes we'll do chicken nuggets. Um, also, we'll do snack lunches. That's a great one. So you just get pepperoni and some cheese slices and kind of fold them, quarter them, and then um, crackers. And let them make their own little Lunchables. They have so much fun with it, and it is so easy. Um, also, we'll do grilled cheese and tomato soup. It's one of my kids' favorites. It's really easy for me to make. My fifth one is the, uh, we do ham and cheese roll-ups and we'll roll them in either tortillas or crescent rolls. My oldest loves ham and cheese rolled up into a crescent roll and then you bake it. It's his favorite meal ever and that is insanely easy. For dinners, keep it to 20 minute meals max. Nothing that takes longer than 20 minutes and make sure to put in some weekly meals. So something that's really easy so you could do, if, if it's in the in the budget, you could do, that's a diet, you order pizza or you eat out or something. Or, you know, you have a Taco Tuesday that you do. For us, it's that we do burgers every Friday and it makes it really easy for me because my husband grills them, so I really don't have to do any cooking. We'll do burgers and chips and that's what we have. Um, sometimes we'll get crazy and get french fries. But <laughs> that's my easy meal. That's the one thing I don't have to plan Fridays. Fridays is always the same meal and it takes a little bit off my brain. And I also try to plan in one leftover night every week. So again, one meal for sure. I don't have to think about, it's just pulling the leftovers out and heating them up. My third piece of advice is, to, is and it's one that some people are not gonna be okay with, but be okay with having a, your kids having a little bit more screen time. I know, I know, I hate screen time. I am all about trying to get kids outside and making sure that they are engaging their minds and not just mindlessly watching TV all the time. But when you are in a really hard season where you're really struggling or you're sick or you're really tired, it is not going to kill them to sit and watch, you know, maybe some educational TV. And you know, when you're having a good time, like a good day or you're having a good moment, Go take them outside, go do something fun. For example, we're, so we're, like I said, we're kind of in survival mode right now, but I knew 
that this week I really wanted to get the kids outside. So I planned for us to go down to the creek for a couple of hours. We packed a lunch and we went out on Thursday, which is when I'm filming this. So today, this morning, hence the hair. So <laughs> this morning we went out, we went down to the creek and the rest of the day I was completely wiped. Nothing else got done. By the way, that thumbnail is my actual living room from <laughs> to this afternoon. It's clean now, but that was what my um, living room looked like this afternoon. But I digress. So, <laughs> um, so you make you just make up for it as much as you can. You know, this it's a sh the thing is that these moments, these seasons are just that they're seasons. You're gonna have times where things go a little bit better, where you're able to um, spend that really good quality time with them, where you're not. They, they aren't watching as much TV, but you know, whenever you're kind of just trying to survive, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, just make sure they're not watching junk all the time and keep it, you know, try to keep it educational as much as possible. And then, you know, try to engage with them whenever you can. Number four is one I actually really have struggled with. And that is make sure you are taking care of yourself too. So normally whenever I, especially when I have a new baby, I tend to put myself at the very bottom, which is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Um, but to the point that I was, I wasn't showering. I was only showering every three days. I would completely forget to eat. Um, I would forget to brush my teeth. You know, it was really bad. Like I wasn't doing basic care for myself, not like indulgent self care, but I wasn't even taking care of my needs. And so don't let yourself get to that point. Don't go to the other extreme and completely indulge in yourself. But at the same time, you need to make sure that your needs are being met. Your actual needs are being met, not your wants, but your needs. Um, so this is going to fall under, you need to remember to eat. Like I said, that was a big one for me. You need to remember to eat. Rest. Um, there are going to be times when you're going to be given an opportunity to clean or to take a nap. And sometimes you're going to have to take the nap and be okay with that. And it, I know that's like the most irritating thing when you have, especially when you have a new baby and someone says, oh, nap when the baby naps. I know that's really, really hard. And I'm not saying every time, but there are some times when you are going to need to nap when the baby naps <laughs> or, you know, whenever, sometimes you just need to, you need to rest. I would also recommend if you can exercise, exercise is releases endorphins and it makes you feel good. And so I would really, if you can try to exercise, even if it's just getting out for a walk. Um, and the most important thing is do not neglect your time with the Lord in order to get things done around the house. Don't put your homemaking above your time with the Lord because the thing is, when we focus our eyes on Jesus, everything else falls into place. It needs to be the, the very most important thing that you do is to spend time in prayer, spend time in your Bible, in your studies, as much as you can. And even if that means that you have kids running around and you're only able to read, you know, half a, you know, half a chapter, then that's, you know, God's going to meet you where you are and turn on worship music when you can turn on a Bible app that you can play on audio and put your headphones in when you're cleaning or whatever, but don't neglect that time because it's really going to feed your soul. And my last tip is one that I almost didn't want to throw in because I feel like everybody says it, but it's true. Um, make sure that you ask for help. Do not be prideful. If you're married, ask your husband, sit down and have a conversation with your husband, tell him what you're struggling with, see if there's anything that he can take off your plate. Um, if you have friends that are willing to come and help you out with the kids so that you can get some rest or you can get some things done, take them up on that or family. Um, I really was terrible about, you know, accepting help from my mother-in-law whenever I had, um, 
any of my babies. <laughs> and I, I shouldn't have been prideful. I should have accepted the help when it was offered. Um, make sure to delegate. If you have kids, make sure that they're helping you around the house. And if you can afford it, then hire some help. Hire somebody to come in and do the deep cleaning for you or, you know, order in food more than you normally would if you can afford it, if it's within your budget. Um, you know, pay someone to do your laundry. <laughs> Just ask for help. Be willing to accept help where people want to help you. Oftentimes when you look up, there are people that want to help you, but we as moms can sometimes be very prideful and think, I need to do this. I need to take care of my home. I am the homemaker and so I'm gonna do it all. I'm super mom, I can do all of the things. That is your pride speaking and do not let it do that to you because you will burn yourself out so hard. And so just look up and look around you and see if there's anyone who genuinely wants to help you and maybe you're just not letting them help you. Um, and if nobody's offering, then ask because most of the time people want to help, but they don't know how, um, and they don't know what you need. And so make sure to tell people what you need. So those are all of my tips on how to make it through um, these hard seasons. My, my biggest piece of advice is to remember that it is just a season, that it's going to pass. It is so hard to see when you're in the midst of it, you know, whenever you're in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through that's put you into this survival mode. And oftentimes, whenever we look back, it's those hard times that we are the most sanctified and that we grow our very most. Cling to that, cling to God, and just, just know that it's going to pass and you're going to get through it. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, I hope that you will consider subscribing. I put out videos every Tuesday and Friday all about homemaking, homeschooling, uh, motherhood, and biblical womanhood. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye.